Well, good morning. I wonder if you can remember the names Trini Woodall and Susanna Constantine. They were the style gurus who were behind the big success of the BBC series What Not to Wear. I wonder how many of you actually had this book. I suspect rather a lot of you because uh, back in the day when it came out, it outsold Jamie, it outsold Delia. It was hundreds of thousands uh, of copies of that particular book were sold in terms of uh, what not to wear and in turn what to wear. And I want to talk about that myself today because Trini and Susanna were okay at the time. They were great for telling us what we should wear to be in style in 2002. But times move on and so I think it's about time we updated things. By the way, not everybody was a complete fan of Trini and Susanna. Uh, somebody uh, who watched their programmes again recently on YouTube, binging on old videos during lockdown, described them as self-esteem sucking goblins from the dark caverns of every woman's mind. Nice to have opinions, isn't it? Well, realising that Trini and Susanna are out of date, a lot of people um, come to me, and this will be no surprise to you to learn at all, a lot of people come to me for style advice. People will ask me, Steve, what should I wear? Because they recognise the style I've got. I'm having to speak to every person individually. It just takes up all my time at the moment. So I thought what I'd do is I'd record a few little tips on this video, my top three tips and then refer them to the YouTube channel that the church runs in the future when somebody stops me in my busy life in the street. I do realise that taking this step will probably turn me into a social media influencer and I'll end up on Strictly, but it's a burden I'm going to have to bear. Well, the first tip I want to show you uh, this morning is a very simple one, and that's change the way that you think. The first thing you need to do, you see, is to change your way of thinking. The way that you see yourself will change what you want to wear. And if you think you're trash, you'll look like trash. On the other hand, you embrace the thought that you're a new creation and you'll dress differently. More than that, you will be a different person. In Colossians chapter 3, we read this from the first verse. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Last week, Tim reminded us of the verse that comes up in the previous chapter, in verse 10. In Christ, you have been brought to fullness. It's a wonderful verse, isn't it? Because it reminds us that if we have been brought to fullness in Christ, that what we already have in him is the real deal. There is nothing that can be added to that to make us better or more super, or more efficient, or whatever it might be. And knowing that we've been brought to fullness in Christ changes the way that we think. And for some of us, that might be a gradual uh, realisation as that takes hold in our rather reluctant minds that actually we are different people now as followers of Christ. Tim used a very simple but very powerful illustration last week, and more to the point, one I've never heard before, which is quite rare when you listen to a sermon, let's face it. He talked about a postcard being tucked into a book and how he talked about how if you put the book on the shelf, then the postcard is also put on the shelf. If you give the book away, you give the postcard away. And it's a great picture, I think, of our status in Christ. If we are in Christ, which simply means a phrase that just means we're Christians. And if we're in Christ, then what happened to Christ also happens to us if we're his followers. So Colossians chapter 2 verse 12 talks about the fact that having been buried with Christ in baptism, 
which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. So if we recall then, as we do in a baptism service, that we are buried with him in baptism and then raised to new life with him, we'll not be thinking of ourselves the way that we once did. And that's not a case of wishful thinking or positive thinking. It's a record of fact about our new status in Christ, according to the scriptures. So in this chapter, Paul here starts off by urging us, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died in your life is now hidden with Christ in God. What matters most when it comes to how we see ourselves is that we set our hearts and our minds on the things above, not on earthly things. And that's very good advice, particularly at a time when we're perhaps feeling very gloomy about a second lockdown. Set your hearts and minds on Christ and all that he has done for us as his followers, not on earthly things. The world may not value you very highly. Christ valued you enough to die for you and then to be raised to new life, to break those old bonds of sin, that we might be forgiven, that we might have a new life. To change the way that you think is my first tip. The second thing we need to do is to purge the old wardrobe. Paul gives us a list of stuff that we're prone to wearing that we need to take off. He also talks in terms of getting rid uh, of some things. Even he uses the extreme language of putting these things to death. So these old clothes are items to be bagged up and sent on to a charity shop. We need to make them the basis of our firework party bonfire. For verse 5 he says, put to death sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires and greed which is idolatry. Then in verse 8 he says that we should rid ourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from our lips. And then in verse nine, we're told not to lie to each other because we have taken off our old self with its practices. This really is a list of what not to wear. And the problem? It's yours and my native costume. Notice what Paul says in verse 7. This is what you used to wear. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived. We can all go through our old photos, can't we, and cringe at the way that we used to look. Some of the old clothes that we wore, that our children look at those pictures now, or our grandchildren, they just curl up laughing. I can't believe we used to wear stuff like that. Well, we might cringe at those things in the same way. We can all look back on our old attitudes and old behaviours and cringe. Probably stronger than cringing. We're kind of crippled with embarrassment, shame, perhaps. Things that we think we could never possibly be forgiven for. And that old wardrobe may have won us great respect and approval in the crowd that we ran with at the time. But will it also cause you to look back and think, what was I thinking? Why was I wearing that? That was awful. Why did no one tell me? See, we may have figured that we looked cool. But we really wore some very stanky stuff. Here are some garments that I really wish I didn't used to wear. Anger, rage, malice, slander and filthy language. 
from my lips. I used to have a really filthy mouth. The language that I used, the things that I said about other people, the things I said to other people. And I can still get times where I have flashbacks of remembrances of things I did and things I said and just cringe at those old clothes. As a new Christian, I read these words in Colossians chapter 3, and I saw that I had to rid myself of those things. My new life as a Christian required me to live a new lifestyle, and God is still helping me to do that. You know that feeling where you've gone through your old wardrobe, you're giving some stuff to a charity shop or whatever, and you have a couple of black bin bags full of old clothes, and then you begin to think, actually, that, that, I used to really like that one. I wonder if I can still get into it. Before you know it, you're rummaging around in those black bin bags again, arcing back to the past. And we can have the same problem with that old clothing as followers of Christ. Sometimes we look back on those old clothes and we figure, they were the old me and part of me is really quite nostalgic for that. And I quite liked being able to wear those old clothes. Maybe it wouldn't hurt just to wear them around the house once in a while. So whether it's greed or anger, or sexual immorality, or lying, or anything else on that list. We know well that we shouldn't be wearing those things. And we know well enough not to wear those outfits to church. We might feel like slipping them on around the house, or if we go to a party. Now says Paul, rid yourself of them. As a Christian, you have to take off the old self and the old way of living, the old wardrobe, and put on instead the new self, which is being renewed, because you now know Jesus. Followers of Jesus should look like Jesus. Jesus told the truth. We should tell the truth. Hardly rocket science, is it? Learn from the old way of life. Live as a follower of Christ. Take off the old way of living. And then thirdly and finally, my final tip for you this morning is try something new on for size. Pick items from your new wardrobe. Put on the new self, says Paul. Clothe yourselves, he says. Put on love. This then is the basis for your new wardrobe. This is what to wear. First of all, he says in verse 10, Put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you and over all these virtues put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity. This may or may not be in fashion in the circles that you move in but this is how you should be dressed as a Christian. You should be compassionate, kind, humble, gentle, patient, forbearing, forgiving and loving. And I hope as we look through that list it calls to mind uh, the list elsewhere in scripture of the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our lives as we are changed more and more into the likeness of Jesus Christ. These then are the new clothes that we are instructed to dress in as believers. We should be counting ourselves dead to the old wardrobe because we are now living in a different kingdom under a new king. You see, I used to be the king of my own life. I was king of my kingdom. I made the laws and I lived the way that suited me. And guess what? It was ugly. It didn't work. 
I hurt other people and I hurt myself doing it as well. Well, now as a Christian, I'm in a new kingdom and I'm serving a different king, King Jesus. So I wear new clothes, I wear a new uniform. And even if I say so myself, what an attractive outfit it is. And I say that because it's not of my making, but of the Lord's. It's an attractive outfit. If we display acceptance of others, for instance, regardless of our creed or colour, whether we're talking to barbarians or Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, regardless of social rank, uh, creed or colour, if we're accepting those people, that's attractive. If we wear compassion and kindness and humility and patience and gentleness, well, just trust me on this, will you? That looks good on you. If you bear with people and forgive them when they wrong you, that is always classy. And if over all these virtues you put on love, it binds it all together in perfect unity. That is seriously stylish. Sometimes you read a story in the newspaper about someone who's died and they have left behind a huge sum of money, even though no one knew they were particularly wealthy. And the reason nobody knew they were particularly wealthy is because they were dressed in rags and yet could have had so much more at their disposal. They could have used that to have dressed well. The gospel says, don't wear those old rags anymore. Something infinitely better is given to you. So dive into my new wardrobe and wear those lovely clothes. Change your outfit. Trini and Susanna recycled the formula of the book that made them so much money in the early 2000s uh, with a follow-up book and maybe more than one for all I know. All I know is I'm getting too many notifications already on Facebook about whether I'm still interested in buying those books. The follow-up book was called What You Wear Can Change Your Life. And in a way, I think they were onto something. Every day we get up and we choose what to wear. Tomorrow morning, will it be the old wardrobe of greed, lust, anger, and the rest? Or will we put on the new wardrobe? Remember Paul's style advice here. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And when we are tempted to rummage through those old clothes and those old attitudes, let's resolve to leave them well alone. Let me close in prayer using some words that Paul finishes with. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Thank you, Father, that we are forgiven, we are accepted, not because of our efforts to look good, but because Christ has done everything necessary to win that new wardrobe for us. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly. May this message from your scripture dwell in us richly. May it change the way that we think. May it change our attitudes. And may it change the way that we are clothed. So we're no longer in the old clothes, but in the wonderful new wardrobe that you desire us to be dressed in. Change us, we pray, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen.